Today we're going to talk about strategic planning and pharmacy operations. In prior lectures earlier this semester, we talked about the importance of operational management as an entrepreneur. Another important step in being an entrepreneur, having your own business, is to understand the importance that it just doesn't happen overnight. And even if you are a current successful business, you always have to be on your toes, evolving, and looking for other opportunities. In this lecture, we're going to describe the process of planning, describe the purpose of strategic planning, and go through some of the specific steps, and identify the purpose and highlight some examples. So what is strategic planning? It is a disciplined effort to produce fundamental decisions and actions that shape and guide what an organization, a business, what it does and why it does it. Strategic planning is like preparing a research project. It takes gathering of information and looking on future implications in current present decisions. It can facilitate communication, participation, accommodation, divergent interests and values, and foster ordinarily decision making. As I said, it's developing steps from the beginning of the business and the future. When you do your business plan, if you continue on next semester, part of your business plan will be strategic planning. You'll develop mission and vision statements. You'll think of smart objectives to measure the success of your business. And you'll look at ways that you're going to report outcomes of what you do within your business to be successful. As you saw in prior lectures with financial analysis and cash flow and inventory, yeah, they are all important things to help look at the financials of your business, but you also have to have tools to be able to measure success of outcomes of what your business stands for or what services your business offers. So how does strategic planning facilitate organizational alignment and success? In the broadest sense, planning represents the purposeful efforts taken by the pharmacy business to maximize its future success. Planning is just one of the four key functions of a manager or entrepreneur owner, along with organizational management, leadership, and controlling costs. Planning may also involve more than just managers. And often as an entrepreneur, you wear many hats. You are the CEO, the CFO, and the manager, especially when you're first starting out. Because the importance of effective planning, many organizations invest significant time and resources. So are, there's going to be many times in your business, you are going to not just be working in your business, but you'll be working on your business. The different types of planning um, is important. Strategic planning is about achieving long-term vision and making sure the organization is doing the things necessary to ensure overall success. Business planning focuses on the feasibility of a specific program, which you'll be doing next semester. But as, you, as I had you this semester write your niche, your elevator speech, you start thinking about your specific goals, and to be able to achieve those specific goals would involve strategic planning. And so this has to occur for success. So here is a slide representing the different types of planning. There is strategic planning, which its purpose is to ensure the organization is doing the right things. It is the long-term five to 20 year goal of the organization. There's the operational planning, is to make sure immediate task objectives are occurring on a day-to-day -day basis. And there's the business planning, which you look at a one to five year you know, growth and you look at how are you going to financially support your business. There's also sometimes in, in businesses, resource planning, 
Um, currently, right now, we are doing both a strategic plan and a resource plan as we are preparing our pharmacies to be able to deliver COVID-19. Sometimes there's organizational planning to ensure that we are meeting the challenges with our staff and the way we operate. And then sometimes your contingency plannings in case of, you know, disasters. Last spring, my business, at least on a week-to-week -week basis, if even more, was consist um, consistently doing contingency planning as we are preparing to operate in the quarantine. So there's eight common steps in planning. You define or orient the planning process to a single purpose, the mission and vision of whatever you're strategically planning. You assess the current situation. You establish goals. You identify strategies to reach those goals. And you establish objectives to support progress toward these goals. You define responsibilities and timelines for each objective. You write and communicate the plan. And you monitor and progress toward meeting goals and objectives. The strategic planning, the purpose to ensure that the organization is doing the right things now and in the future. It helps determine the current direction and situation. How do I transform my business from just a prescription business to a more clinical healthcare business? How do I take care, uh, how do I, you know, reach certain opportunities as healthcare is changing? Your business will grow and change throughout the course of having it. During strategic planning, you're going to do process of selecting organizational goals. And you are going to then make decisions of which ones you hope to obtain and how you'll implement them. Strategic planning is very similar sometimes to business planning. There's customer identification. There's mission and vision. We're doing a SWOT analysis. We're prioritizing issues and establishing goals. And we're defining metrics and how do we identify accountability. The difference between a strategic plan and a business plan and strategic plan is not necessarily focusing on the financials as a business plan is, but focusing on how to make whatever you want to do, whether it's a diabetes education service, whether it is developing a service you're going to deliver on the web, a consulting service. So sometimes before you even write the business plan, you're going to strategic plan of what is your business. And that is why this semester I had you walk through the many exercises. Companies that engage in long-range strategic planning are often more successful than those who do not. It is better to be proactive than to be reactive in a business. It is not ideal to be reactive, but sometimes it's necessary. As I said last spring, we did not plan initially for COVID, but it came upon us and we had to make changes. We had to make safety changes. We had the ways we can deliver and continue to operate as a business. And many businesses beyond pharmacy had to do the very same thing and are still doing it in the current environment. Proactive strategic planning enables an organization to control its environment instead of vice versa when, when it can, can do that. Organizations are able to think and plan in a proactive, out-of-box manner, many times position themselves not only to control their business, but also to actually create or recreate the business environment. Think to yourself of some businesses that have changed over time, of what they deliver, how they deliver, what they offer compared to others. And think to yourself too, as we are slowly entering the semester, and hopefully some of you continue on to do your own business plan, is what type of pharmacy business do you want? Community, institutional, consulting, technology? How will your current pharmacy business make money? And what will be the necessary strategic planning to meet your goals? Today's issues are facing, you know, community pharmacy. As you developed your niche, your elevator pitch, how do you see those ideas in your pharmacy business in five years? Thinking about what opportunities can exist, that is why staying on top of what's going on in the industry 
not just in pharmacy itself, but in healthcare. What are barriers? What are some initiatives to develop the revolution of pharmacy business? And how would you approach the needs of a future customer for pharmacy business? Remember I said earlier, what do customers want? How do you become the expert of that in the customers? Sometimes it's best to study what businesses that have struggled and what businesses have succeeded in some of those areas. Next semester, as you create your business plan and go through the different needs of a business plan, what next semester is compared to this semester is, is not weekly video lectures, but it will be at least bi-weekly, at least monthly meetings in the planning of your business. And when we start up that business plan, there will be some strategic planning involved because you're going to have to say, what is it? What does it look like in the next five years? How am I going to measure that success? Because in doing that, you're going to be able to identify marketing analysis, financial projections to look at what is your start of funding needed. In some studies, that have been done over the years. A study way back in 1996 said less than 31% of pharmacy owners or pharmacy managers reported using strategic planning. The Journal of the American Pharmacy Association study in 2005 reported only 26.8% of independent pharmacies use strategic planning. But if you, you know, you sometimes hear the end of independent pharmacy. Well, if you talk to those owners who have been successful, they're willing to change and do strategic planning. Wayne Gretzky, Hall of Fame NHL hockey player, once said, I skate to where the puck is going to be, not where it has been. So we always have to be looking into the future. Walgreens, let's look at chain pharmacies. For over a century, Walgreens grew by adapting its corner drugstore formats to changing consumer needs and expanding to more locations. But with more than 75% 75 of Americans already living within five miles of Walgreens, the company needed an additional path for growth. InnoSci collaborated with America's largest pharmacy chain on its journey to transform the drugstore into the first choice destination for healthy and daily living. So Walgreens decided to become and invest in being the Medicare expert, as they like to put in chain pharmacy and also being a very strong business out front in health and beauties. In fact, they acquired and combined it with boot alliances in Europe, which is known for more of over the front health and beauty aids. And so strategic planning is important in those aspects. And so when they were strategically planning, Walgreens had been able to measure the effectiveness of new strategies and innovations in the plans and terms. They wanted to push high number of patient consultations with pharmacists. They wanted to report high customer satisfaction. They wanted to report higher acquisition rates for new patients and higher retail prescription market share, now nearly 20% nationally. And they did this all with focusing on chronic disease patients, Medicare patients, and that is what their focus in advertising is. So steps in the planning process. As I said, you establish the or, or orient the planning process to a single purpose or desired result. You establish the current situation. You establish goals. You identify strategies to reach those goals. You establish objectives to support the progress toward those goals. You define responsibilities and timelines, which is very important, and writing this out on paper. Monitor progress and assigning responsibility. So as I said, strategic planning is very similar to business planning. You identify the customer identification. What does the customer need? So examples of a strategic planning is looking at if what does the customer need what is the goal to deliver that to them sometimes customers may, may not always know what they need but look at the smartphone industry whether you're an android or iphone person they're always looking at what are the things people use these for 
how do they do this? They look at survey process. They survey current customers. They look at the current market share. They look at what's being delivered and what's not being delivered. And once they establish what they believe the customer needs, that is your goal. How, what are the objectives that you need to achieve that goal? And what are the action plans to deliver those objectives to be able to do that? This is a constant relationship between looking at the vision that you want for your business, the goals and objectives you want to obtain for your business, especially for your customers, and the strategies to get there. So annual strategic operational planning also looks at market analysis. You look at and demonstrate thorough planning of what does the consumer need and what do they want. You take a systematic approach to developing ways to get there, and you figure out how do you get people to buy in to your dream, that elevator pitch. Any successful strategic plan has, you need to have ways to measure it, to make sure you're going down the right road. Who is going to be accountable within your organization to help deliver the strategic planning? What is going to be the mission and vision to, to, to drive you to that strategic plan and look at the specific goals that you are going to highlight in your measurement. So customer identification may require some brainstorming. You need to have a technique to identify your customers. You may look at a current analysis, a broad analysis of who are the customers you serve. You may do a SWOT analysis of, you know, looking at your strengths and weaknesses of what you deliver to your customers. And you may read up on new things that are being happening into healthcare. What if your strategic plan for the next year is to be able to be part of the pandemic solution in delivering COVID vaccine? How are you going to strategically plan to be able to do that? Your customer identification used to identify all those who are affected by the actions and outcomes of the pharmacy team. Customer identification is used to identify what do our customers want or need, and also think, who is our customer? Many years ago, when we wanted to get into the diabetes business, we actually had an expert physician who was an endocrinologist meet with us. And we actually had a patient who was a type 1 diabetic who was an adult. And we questioned both of them and asked, what do they want from their pharmacy? What do they need? And from there, we developed what we would deliver in diabetes services. Once you identify the customer need, what is the mission that you feel confident of your organization to be able to achieve the strategic plan? And what is the vision that creates the momentum and anticipation about the future? The mission statement should show, should show opportunities or needs that we exist to address. What we do to address these. The principles and beliefs that our guide our work. So the mission statement should tell us our purpose, our business, and our values. To build a compelling mission statement, it should be inspirational. It should motivate. It should be easy to grasp. It should have proactive verbs to describe what we do. It should be free of too much jargon and be short enough to be easy to repeat. Look at Google's mission statement for their overall business. Google's mission is to organize the world information and make it universally accessible and useful. You may not use Google, but everybody at one time, I believe, in life uses Google. And whether you believe in their business tactics or don't, their mission statement does reflect of who they are as a company right now. Your vision, it should be what does success look like? What does success look like to motivate, to inspire, to stretch the boundaries, to paint the picture of your business? Here's Amazon's vision statement. Our vision is to be the Earth's most customer-centric company to build a place where people can come to find and discover anything they might want to acquire online. What is your business's going to be vision statement? The vision is what the pharmacy organization wants to be at some time in the future. CVS vision statement is we strive to improve the quality of human life. Rite Aid. Customers confidently choose us first for their everyday health and wellness needs because we consistently understand and exceed their expectations. 
St. Joseph's Hospital, the core values that guide us are reverence, integrity, compassion, and excellence. And my family's pharmacy's vision statement is at Patton Pharmacy, we do not what we do not want to just do our best. We want to be at the best at what we do. Once you establish your customer identification, you would do a, a SWOT analysis, just like you would do in business planning. You look at your internal factors, strength, weaknesses, and external factors, opportunities, and threats. And when you look at those external factors, how can you meet them head on and, and you know, get around them or, you know, solve those problems? And then finally, we need to prioritize our issues in strategic planning and establish goals and strategies. And you can have many goals and objectives, but you need to be able to organize them in a fashion of what needs to be done first. And once you establish those goals and objectives, you need to be able to have smart objective criteria. Specific, state exactly what is to be achieved. Measurable, it's capable of measurement and can determine if it's achieved. And how will you measure it? How will you collect the data to measure it? It's also got to be realistic, giving the circumstances is which to set and what resources are needed to make that success. And as we identify and strategically plan today and in the future, it needs to be relevant to the people responsible for achieving it. And we need to hold time frames to hold people accountable of when we are going to obtain this. But is this a smart objective? You know, things. We want to improve the environment in the pharmacy, decrease the cost of wasted drugs, improve in patient care by implementing, you know, pharmacists in certain areas. So these are all examples of smart objectives in different pharmacy organizations. You don't want to have the classic beauty pageant objective that sometimes often gets stereotypically you hear in movies. My goal is to achieve world peace. We need to be more specific. We need to be able to find metrics and assign accountability. Sharing the plan. Commit to plan to writing, detail, outline, and matrix. Share with all members of your department within your business. Share with, as I said often, you will be your own vice president and CEO, but share that maybe among other partners or colleagues that you trust. The, part, the strategy, the department will align its pharmacy services to be consistent. This is an example of a strategic plan from a hospital. This department will align its pharmacy services to be consistent with the hospital's initiative to become part of the, an account care organization. The goal is to develop and implement specific clinical pharmacy services that help deliver care, improve patient outcomes, reduce spending, and to generate revenue. Objectives, identify gaps in care delivery quality and spending where pharmacy services can lead to environments. Select one clinical pharmacy service to implement in the short term. Our action plans, perform a situation analysis of the hospital accountable care organizations and pharmacy department, including a SWOT analysis. Prepare a list of clinical pharmacy services that can be developed and implemented to meet the needs of the organization and compare those services on the basis of feasibility and impact. Finally, select the most appropriate service and develop a business plan for that service. So as I said, strategic planning is a way to begin your business plan. Think of the, it's like task management. What do I need to do to achieve my goal? Steps in a strategic planning is the execution phase. You will develop your teams. You may provide education to the people that you want to help develop this plan, your workers. You may have to gather, gather baseline data from your own systems or from some analysis out in the community, doing a market analysis of your local community. You may need to refine the metrics that are needed to collect, to evaluate the success. And then you develop action plans, timelines, and dark targets. And once you have all that in place, you need just to take action and do it. As you are doing your strategic plan, you need to have a monitoring phase where you report um, reports from top 
people you've assigned to be part of the strategic plan and give deadlines of when those reports are due. Take action as needed to adjust or stay the course. Maybe having dashboards or scoreboards for visual reporting. Maybe having, you know, focus groups, as I mentioned when we were developing our diabetes program, bulletin boards or newsletters. So there should be reporting. Finally, I want to talk about, um, there was a book I read back in the 90s by Stephen Covey, and maybe some of you have heard of, heard of it or read it, and it's The Seven Steps of Highly Effective People, and I, I encourage if you ever have a chance, read it or get it on audiobook. Um, Stephen Covey, um, unfortunately, had passed away the last couple of years, but he had one habit that I always, the first habit is to be proactive, but the second habit is to begin with the end in mind. Begin with the end of mind begin, means to begin each day, task, or project with a clear vision of your desired direction and destination, and then continually by flat, flexing your proactive muscles to make this happen. This is what strategic planning is. One of the best ways to incorporate habit two into your life is to develop your own personal mission statement. It should focus on what you want to be or do. It is your plan for success. It reaffirms who you are, put your goals in focus, and move your ideas into the real world. Your mission statement makes you the leader of your own life. Many of you chose this course either to find out whether or not you had what it takes to be an entrepreneur. Many of you, as I met you in your first Zoom meeting and I've read your elevator pitches and your niches, you have ideas of what you want your business to be. And it can be that with effective planning. There are barriers and limitations. You need to make sure you commit enough time to plan. There may be interpersonal issues within your organization, especially if you have partners, of what is important first. You may have lack of planning skills, but if you are have survived pharmacy school, you've already begun to develop planning skills. You can't survive this curriculum that you have without good planning skills. But you also have to be able to plan far enough into the future. You have to be prepared for a constantly changing environment, especially in healthcare. You have, uh, you know, you know, you need to make sure you, you know, block out enough time and make sure that you have the resources needed. You have to monitor the success of your strategic planning. And the other thing is you need to get everybody on board whether that's yourself, your significant other, your partners, and the staff that you work with. As I said, you need to have sufficient planning time. You need to be able to get through those interpersonal issues. You need to read other self-help books to help develop better planning skills and also planning ahead. So questions to consider. Think of a specific community practice. What barriers do you believe would limit the ability of pharmacists and pharmacy managers to conduct effective planning in that setting? Think of the current environment you work in now. What changes have occurred in the practice of pharmacy over the past 20 years? How would you strategically plan to have enabled a pharmacy organization to better position itself for those changes? As you begin to pick your rotations for the next year, Think about your experiences you want to get. If you want to be your own pharmacy owner, get experiences not just in community pharmacy or in independently owned businesses, but challenge yourself to other healthcare entities that may be part of your business someday, or you may be delivering services to those healthcare entities. What future changes does community pharmacy practice have to strategically plan for the future? As I said, you need to stay on top of your game to find out about them, belonging to pharmacy organizations, reading healthcare news resources, and also doing a SWOT analysis when you have an idea. I'm going to have one assignment for you, and this will be due um, in two weeks. I want you yourself, write your name, and what is your personal mission statement? And as you've developed your future niches and thought about them over the semester and 
think about your future niche and what would be the outline steps to make this part of a successful business. Thank you for your time and please look at the other um, lectures and assignments that are for this week. Take care.